We're talking everything PA46 today in The Hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar, I'm Christy Wong. Today's episode is brought to you by Wingfield Aviation. Welcome back, DPE Joe Casey. Thank you, it's good to be here, Christy. Thank you so much for joining us. So today we are talking everything PA46. Great. And for those of our viewers that don't know what a PA46 is, why don't you just jump right in and tell us? Well, there's a whole bunch of them. There, okay. There's a bunch of them. So you mean it's not just the Malibu? No, the Malibu is okay. the first one. The okay. Malibu, then a Mirage, Meridian, there's a Matrix. Uh, jet prop, M350, M500, and M600. So it's kind of like the PA28, where they started with a PA28 like Cherokee, but then it was like the 140, 161, et cetera. It began to morph into, but there really is big differences between some of those airplanes, uh, between the Malibu and the Mirage, for instance. And okay. so there's so some big differences. So why don't we talk about that then? So we kind of know what a Malibu is ish, right? It's Let's talk about what a Malibu is. Let's talk about what a Malibu is. All right. It's a great airplane. And, and really, Piper hit an absolute home run in the early days by coming up with it. Back in late, uh, early 80s, they actually came out in late 83 and 84. So 84 through 88 is going to be your Malibus. Those are all going to be continental-powered airplanes, uh, continental engine, 520 or a 550 today. Um, and they're six-place airplanes that were designed from the factory for pressurization. And that's probably the key to the whole thing, is that they're, it's a pressurized cabin that's that's designed for it they didn't take another airplane and try to make it into a pressurized airplane they okay. designed it for pressurization and uh, there's really not a not a good comparative airplane to it out there it's just such a great airplane in its field okay and so it's a it's a six place low wing piper that's right okay is it was it supposed to be like an equivalent almost to like a cherokee six or was this just a brand new design that piper came brand, up with brand new design off the shelf matter of fact uh, a good friend of mine named john mariani uh, who still is a trainer in this world uh, and is, is even today he was on the design team and so i've heard the the early day speech you know about about how they did, came up with it and designed it and if anybody ever has a chance uh, john still has a class called john's class that he teaches in Vero Beach, and uh, one of the subjects he goes over, he gives a two-hour block of instruction on how the PA-46 came around. Uh, but it was a clean sheet design, and uh, boy, they hit a home run with it, that's for sure. Okay. I, I think the P, I think the PA-46 has actually saved Piper. I mean, Pi Piper went into bankruptcy many times, but today it is, you know, it's their flagship airplane. Oh, uh, wow. That's for sure. Okay, not the Warrior. Not the Warrior. Well, that, you know, it's interesting because not today the, the, the Warrior, you know, the, the the small fixed wing uh, uh, piston non-pressurized airplanes that Piper sell. They're selling a gob of them today just because trainers are right. selling well. So flight schools are selling those archers. Absolutely. Okay. So the so the you know the small ones are definitely a, a big part of what Piper's got going on today. But the M class is what we call it today. We, you know, Malibu Mirage Meridian. Everything starts with Makes an M. Sense. Yeah. So we call it the M class of, of airplanes. Uh, is really the flagship. It's the one that really has made Piper what it is today. Okay. So let's talk about the difference in between the Malibu the Mirage and the Meridian. Okay. All right. Yeah, so if you if you go from 84 to 88, you got the Continental Malibu. In 89, Piper basically came up with a fancier interior. It's a little bit a little bit fancier and they put a Lycoming engine so they could jump up to 350 horsepower. And so for today, you can buy a what is a M350, which is not the same. It's been there have been lots of additions as it goes, but it's still the same fuselage, same wing, same engine, with you know same capabilities, same performance. But things are a lot nicer today than they were in 1989. But that's the uh, you can buy a Lycoming powered Mirage slash M350 today. Um, it was realized pretty quickly that the airframe is so good that there's ways to bolt turbine engines on them. Huh. And so uh, so that you end up with, uh, there's a company called Rocket Engineering that came up with a jet prop, which is to me a fabulous conversion uh, to this airplane. And Piper, in response to the jet prop, came up with the Meridian about the same time. So they, there was a competitive flair there for sure. Uh, but you have the Meridian, which is uh, a turbine engine airplane as well. And really both of them are great airplanes. So if I had a, a Malibu or a Mirage, could I like just take it to the maintenance shop and just slap a 
turbine engine on it, and then boom, I've got a Meridian. You slap about 600,000 down oh, yeah. to get it done, but yeah, so you, you sure could. And you wouldn't go to just any maintenance shop, you would go to the owner of the STC, which is Rocket Engineering in Spokane, Washington, and you absolutely, people do it every day, and they're, I don't, I think they're at 340 conversions as of today, wow. uh, which is a, a fabulous conversion that's well respected in the marketplace. So can I go to Piper and buy a Meridian? Absolutely. Well, they call it an M500 today. Gotcha. But it's effectively very similar. The, the avionics are spectacular in the M500, better than the Meridian, but the guts of it are all the same. So what would you say is the benefit of having the turbine engine over the non-turbine, the piston engine? Uh, just about every reason. Okay. Meaning, meaning it's faster. So we've got Team Piston and Team Turbine and we know which side Joe is on. Well, no, no, I'm for both of them. I, okay. I, it, the turbine really is going to, it's going to be an airplane that's going to climb much better, have much more power, go faster, but you really don't gain a benefit until you go a long way. Okay. So uh, the pistons are going to are definitely they will go a long way. Matter of fact, they'll go further in the grand scheme of things. But the piston, if you're going to go a long way, the turbine will go faster and get you there quicker and and more reliable engine, more expensive. So if if you have the money to go into it, a turbine is a certainly a great thing. But the pistons are are fabulous. So the turbine's not necessarily for that hundred dollar hamburger run, unless you're going to like you know Oregon. For lunch. Right. Okay. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a hundred bucks either. No. So hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it would definitely be expensive. That's but for but again, turbine reliability, turbine smoothness, turbine speed. Okay. Um, it, they're they're great airplanes. So what would you say the horsepower equivalent for the turbine is? Because we said it was what three hundred and fifty horsepower for, for the, the piston. Yeah, for, for the, the piston. For the right. So the turbine. I know that it's different. You know, it's in terms of turbine. Five hundred sixty horsepower. Okay. And you know, it's interesting because I remember in my uh, private pilot check ride many many moons ago, uh, but the examiner asked me, you know, what determines rate of climb, and and the answer that is excess horsepower. That's. That's the bottom line is, you know, whatever excess horsepower you have from maintaining the, the, where you're at is going to be converted into rate of climb. Well, when you, the airplane has 350 horsepower and it's climbing out nicely, when you bolt on this extra horsepower, every bit of that goes into rate of climb. So or, it's going to climb out really nicely. You bet. <laughs> they, they, the turbines just perform exceedingly well. All right. So if somebody's thinking about buying a Malibu, what should they look for? Or a PA-46 in general? Yeah. Well, it's a high-performance airplane, and so you don't want to walk into this um, arena blind or with without knowledge. It, uh, you, if, you get, if you buy a Meridian wrongly, in other words, an airplane that's been either abused or mm -hmm. poor maintenance or something of this nature, you can buy a six-figure problem that mm -hmm. you, didn't, you weren't aware of. You, you know, if you mess up buying a smaller airplane, you, the numbers are, are much smaller. You can, you can still get, lose a lot of money, but anyway, you don't want to go into this world without having knowledge. So either find somebody that knows what they're talking about, we can help yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, get that knowledge. And there's lots of places to get that knowledge. You can definitely buy a, a PA-46 without professional help, but just make sure you're wise about how you do it. So you would not recommend a PA-46 for, say, a private pilot student? No, okay. no, just it, making sure. No, <laughs> and I have had people request to do that. I've even had people request to, uh, you know, that don't have their instrument rating, and want to get in a PA forty six. That's really not a. It, it's okay, but just not great. I'd really rather see somebody get a private pilot license in a smaller easier to fly airplane, uh, or not easier to fly, but simpler airplane, get their instrument rating in a simpler airplane where they learn that, and then apply the benefits that come with a PA-46, like pressurization and icing right. and, you know, speeds and where all the numbers are bigger. Could you use a pressurized turbine PA-46 for, say, a high altitude endorsement? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. we, we do it so all now time. we so we've got this very functional airframe then that's not only a uh, high performance so you can get an endorsement for high performance it's complex of course you can also do high altitude training in it mm -hmm. okay yeah, what great. what else do you want to tell me about the PA46 look you've got me like on the hook <laughs> Steve is gonna hate you because you know of course I'm gonna be looking at PA46s now but yeah well they're, they're you, if you're flying something non-pressurized, it's, it's probably you're going to be your first look in the pressurized world. 
and the pressurized world is such a sweet world. It's hard to really explain to somebody that doesn't know the benefits of being pressurized, but to be able to fly a flight above the weather, you know, if you get up into the teens or above, you generally speaking are going to be above most of the weather, not thunderstorms and, you know, there's icing and all kinds of things that can happen. But on your most of your flights, you're going to be above most of the weather happens lower to the Earth's surface. And so when you fly in a pressurized airplane, you can fly in the upper altitudes and still have your body be at a place where you feel comfortable. And so if you have a long, if you're a businessman and you have a long flight and you're flying a non-pressurized airplane and you have a long way to go, you're gonna be bumping around in the cumulus clouds and being mildly hypoxic as you go and then have a business meeting. Or you can go faster in a pressurized environment and arrive at that meeting in a much fresher way. And so, so how high can it go? 25,000 for the for the piston versions is is the you can go yeah they'll go wow. on up there and uh, 28 for the meridian 27 for the jet prop so Wow. Yeah, they'll go up pretty high. I was thinking high teens. That's impressive. No, no. That, you know the glory of the PA46 in my opinion is the is the pressurization. It's a bulletproof pressurization, much like the airliners in the sense of it's a high quality system um, that, that works very much the same way. Um, but it's just such a great pressurization system, the airframe itself, that it's been a great airplane to add all the different engines and different modifications to, to, to that really have made it even better. But it, if, you're, if you're moving from the non-pressurized to the pressurized world, you're probably going to look at a PA-46. Um, and when you do, I think they're great airplanes. Um, so that, that is a question I have about the airframe itself. So it, how does the pressurization affect the lifespan of the airframe versus I get a piston non-pressurized version does that typically last longer, shorter? Ones? Yeah, usually a non-pressurized airplane will have no life limit for for the the uh, in, for the airframe or the wings. Any pressurized vessel is going to have a life limit associated with it. Um, it's usually around ten thousand hours. And it, uh, that and, and think of it this way: we're pumping air into the cabin and swelling the cabin. If you want to think of it, in other words, that cabin's going through a a, a pressurization cycle is a vicious cycle. If right. you think, I mean, it like in a PA forty six it's 5.5 psi which pounds per square inch that means every little square inch has 5.5 pounds on it mm -hmm. so you know something the size of this table might have 1500 pounds of pressure exerted wow. on that so think about that whole airframe expanding and contracting with every time you take every time you go up to altitude and come back down um, you know the airframe just doesn't last as long but so, this is every pressurized airplane. It's not just to be Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, it sounds to me like that's why it was so great that when Piper designed it, they designed it for pressurized aircraft in mind because absolutely, absolutely. They, they didn't have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to make it work. That's exactly right. That's okay. Exactly right. Uh, if I were to convince my husband to allow me to buy a PA-46, <laughs> what price range do you think I would be looking at? If I were to buy like a moderately used, you know, Malibu, I want to start small and buy it, start small, buy a Malibu. Um, what would the price range be? Today's done in 2020, uh, 250,000. Oh, is that all? <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> little chump change. It's about, it's about the low like low end. Five warriors. Yeah, five warriors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but two, 250 will get you a, you really, there's some probably some airplanes that are lesser than that, but if you buy those, you're probably gonna have to throw money into it to get right. you back up to where it was. So you tend to pay what, you, you know, get what you pay for. Okay. Um, but 250, all the way if you buy a brand new M600, which is, spectacular i mean they're just uh, piper hit a home run with the m600 um, bigger wing uh, engines stronger uh, lots of range g3000 i mean it's the interior is fabulous you're going to pay north of three million for that wow so yeah but it, but but again great airplane. you hear that steve lotto plane <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you're in the lotto you definitely want that airplane Okay. Um, all right. Well, is, is there anything else that I haven't asked that you want to tell me about this? You know, the PA-46 tends to be an owner-flown world, um, which is why I love being in the world in this in this market, because as an instructor, I get to uh, instruct, a, instruct a group of pilots that kind of need me. And, and, you know, in other words, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of the world that, that can be done. So if, you have a, if you're flying around in a non-pressurized airplane, just realize there's lots of owner-flown people out there that are doing exactly that, and, it, and it's, it's doable. 
and it, uh, it really is good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That was great information. I really appreciate it. Thank It'll you so much. Thank you for having me. Definitely help me when I win the lotto one day, which airplane I'm going to buy. There you go. All right. Well, there you have it. We've learned everything uh, about the PA-46 and why it's not just a Malibu. Uh, we'll see you next time in the hangar.